In three, two, one, we are back, Strange Crew. We are ready to record. Welcome back, Strange Crew. You are tuned into another trip through life's deep cuts. We hope you enjoy the ride. How are you guys? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's been a long day. It's nice. It's a nice break. We are so excited to record and get back in the Strange HQ and talk to you a little bit about what the heck has been going on. (laughs) We've been busy. We've been all over the world since we last recorded and we're pumped to talk to you guys. We've... I don't know. We've been connecting with so many incredible people, so many new fans of the show, fans of music in general. And we just wanted to say, you know, thank you so much. If you are a new subscriber, a new listener, thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate you listening and sharing the show. Um, If you are uh, a past fan or family member or friend, we also thank you. And we want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon subscribers real quick. The people who help make our show and support our show, we couldn't do it without you. We wouldn't be able to record without you. So a quick shout out to Cousin Matt Letson, Michael Hawkins, Colin Walshoot, James Mullinger, Chuck Healy, Mary Roach, Glenn Hicks, Brent Harris, Brennan Parker, Jennifer Irving, Greg Hemmings, John Adam Ian, Dee Dee Keel, and Kate McKenzie. Yay! Thank you so much for your patronage. Again, couldn't do the show without you. So let's get into it, Sharice. Let's right. talk to everybody about what's been going on. Right. So let's go back. I think we need to start with California. Yeah. We were in California. We don't know if you saw it or not, but we were there. Follow us on socials. We have, there's so much, <laughs> there's so much stuff there. I wait for the Zoom on my face where I'm just like, but it's one of those things. No, we had a great trip. Um, we we really did. We had a trip to remember. Um, it was a trip at the Whiskey Go Go with Pamela DeBar. We were so excited. What an honor to be back. You know, Sharice and I, when we started the show, it really is all about connecting us about our love of music, um, the people who write about it, um, the people who go to shows and still try to connect about it. And I think that show for us, yeah, it really was about connecting with our our friend. And our pals that we have met the past couple of times out there. But really, the thing I think for me, it was about making memories. And one of the things that I'll take from that show was when we were seeing um, Miss P talk to, you know, her friend uh, Michelle and her first boyfriend, Bobby Martini, and having them on stage and just seeing how important it is to have these journals about the shows that they've gone to and the shows that they're still producing and creating today to keep friendships relationships and their memories and their minds strong and I found that extremely inspiring it actually made me I teared up yeah I did too I like I was I remember you were at the merch table and I was like sitting up and I just remember Michelle Overman reading the little like passage that she wrote in Pamela's diary in 1969 I I mean think about all the kitchen parties you and your friends have maybe gone to where you think about like how awesome it was and think about actually taking a minute and like writing it down and having such a great time and then that was 1969 she wrote in that was the the year and I just remember being like blown away that you know here they are so many years later on stage with so many new generations of people who love and listen and share music and there's so many podcasts and people out there doing different shows and I I think all the power to us all because I think you know what we've learned over the past couple of months is that like music really truly is something that is keeping us alive it's helping us keep our toes on the ground and there for our friends and families even if sometimes not in the easiest capacity and I think music really is how we keep our minds sharp Um, I know it is at least for me and so that was a really big highlight for me obviously when we get to California it's a great experience every time and we're extremely extremely grateful and we work hard to get there but I think every time we come back it comes back with a sense of like Let's work harder. Let's talk more to people about the music that they love. Let's get out to more shows. Let's go in line and talk to fans. Let's ask them how far that they've traveled. Why? You know, what's their favorite album? Because that kind of gives us the the rah-rah to get through what's going on in our lives, whether it be good or bad, too. You, you could see that demonstrated in our most recent show excursion to Queens of the Stone Age. We did, you, well, it was Kate, I was behind the camera, but chatting with fans with a little mic. Queens of the Stone Age. 
I was so excited. I had it was the best. I'd really, really been looking forward to that show for months. Yeah, and just seeing, um, you know, just whipping out the mic and just talking to people, like just gra- people we didn't even know. Small mic, us. strange stories. <laughs> That's what we call that segment. Except the guys from Mess. That that was a pleasant surprise. We love Mess. They were at the. Oh my god! Shout out Mess. God, we love you guys. So um, I'm cool. definitely a band. If you're not listening to them right now, and if you are, crank them again. Acadian psych rock, essentially. Oh my God, they're so good. It's they're so good. No, and like, honestly, guys, when we, you know, when we went to go see Queens in August, you know that we've talked about it. We've talked about it when we were talking to the chill teens about Queens of the Stone Age. Yes. And it's great. We saw Aiden actually at the Moncton show. And so I was like, I told you that they would be that good. And it was really, it was awesome. We saw Connor as well there with Aiden. We saw so many people um, in Moncton. But the thing about it, and if, if you guys really want to know what happens at like how this happens is it's, it's not about what, you know, it's who, you know, it's about karma. It's about sharing. It's about trying to bring people along for the ride. And, you know, whether it's accessing channels or media or, or whatever, we really do try our best to spread the love, bring people along, um, have a really hospitable time and event wherever we're going. And for us, like having Queens of the Stone Age in New Brunswick and in Nova Scotia, like that's huge for so many people. Like I've listened to them for over 20 years. So for me, like having them here when we've traveled to go see them was huge. And being there, you know, obviously we were waiting out like for a couple of hours in the front, like in waiting to get front row because, you know, they didn't have a VIP. They didn't have like a backstage, uh, like at that point. And it's just one of those things that when we were there, it's like, you know, feet started to hurt. We were like, let's go back, have some snacks. My ears hurt. And maybe, yeah, my ears were killing guys. If you guys have any ear problems from when you were a kid or tubes in your ears, I can relate. So, you know, I, I was just excited. And like the show itself was just, it blew my mind. He shouted me out. It was crazy. Blue haired babe. It was a great, great, great show. I had such a good time. But the Halifax show was different energy and we had so many buds there as well like ryan stanley uh like we just we had so many people that were there that also live in like halifax that you know so there was just i think a lot of energy and you know we were able through uh another friend an incredible friend um to somehow be plucked out of the front row at queens of the stone age before the encore like just like i'm going yeah Um, as Dane Cook would use, would say, um, coming in, um, and, and literally it was literally like we were just taken out of the front row and it was crazy. Um, and we got to go on the side stage for the encore and we got to go backstage and meet the band after. And I'll be honest, it was the best experience of my life. Um, just really great people, um, great crew, um, great people on the crew on the road, um, set up, tear down, like just extremely nice people. Um, not douchebags in the least at all. Um, it was amazing. We got to meet the trailer park boys. Um, just, yeah, it was just a really, really incredible show. And it just made us so grateful for the platform we have, the people that we're getting to know, the people that we meet at shows who know us, that's still wild to us, um, to the new people that follow our show and what we're doing and the content that we provide. Like we're just that, I think us talking to Josh about music really solidified why we do what we do, how we want to take it to where we're taking it both this year and next year. And, and again, we couldn't do that without you guys. So you know, we really appreciate it. And I think music from what we've been understanding after sharing some of the Queens stuff is I've gotten a lot of DMS through strange grooves, a lot of DMS through myself personally. And that, that show, both of those shows meant a lot to a lot of you. And a lot of you were going through a lot of different things that, you know, it's weird sometimes when we're going through the hardest fucking times in our lives, we can put on a dope ass outfit or whatever and go see one of our favorite bands and sometimes it's really hard to stand through that you know and I'll be honest that's one of the things that I I said to Josh is I I know that he's lost about 10 friends in the past two years and I know that singing those songs going through so many life changes and 
getting older and going through like sickness and things like that. It can't, it, we might be rah, rah at the concert, but it's probably pretty difficult to sing those songs sometimes. And depending on how the crowd is or just different variables, how the drive is on the bus. Like I know it's really easy to take the wind out of my sails. So I could only imagine being someone that has even more people to take care of and obligations and just a place to be all the time talking to him about that and just how mental health is so important I really think is why we're going to keep doing the show and I think you'll notice even how it's being filmed right now we want to be a lot more intimate with the people who support us the people who listen to our show and we want to be more helpful to the bands and the people that we're connecting with too and give them a better platform and a better way of getting out to different audiences I concur (laughs) so that's what's up. You heard it here first. <laughs> Welcome to my TED Talk. <laughs> I couldn't get over how, um, well, I guess I could get over it. the the difference in vibe between the Moncton and Halifax show. Yeah, definitely. And Portland, because we saw them in, in Portland uh, last summer. So Moncton was like, I know a lot of drunk drunk folks, of course. It's New Brunswick. But like, it was it was chill for yeah. the most part overall. And then go to Halifax. We were, we were front row both both nights. And Y'all were rowdy in Halifax. It was. Yeah, rowdy. I'm still sore in places. Shoutouts to our pals, um, Madison, and to Anna, Jessica, Kelly, who came with us to the shows. Um, Yeah, it really, show going is definitely different in your late 30s. I'll say that. Because unless you have some area of like being safe or like away or having like double the orthopedic insoles and like water intake it's it's actually a lot easier to stay home um and I don't want to stay home I want to go see my favorite bands and I I'm just wondering if maybe in 2025 we could have like a a separate section that's like it's like VIP okay hear me out picture it Sicily 1930 (laughs) no really it's like a VIP section but it has some no actually you know what it is it's what they were doing during covid and they were doing pods where they would have people come to you with snacks, come to you to with drinks. Away. Things were sectioned off. People were considerate, less pay. rowdy. I will pay, pay for that. Ray Gracewood, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> we will just get us our own pod. <laughs> right? I will pay for the pod, right? I think it's just one of those things. And I think, too, what I am noticing, too, as well at a lot of shows is that so many people have, and myself, I will say it's me. It's me first. I will take accountability, but I'm sure I'm not the only one. Me. I cannot deal with things sensory. So I love light shows. I love, woo, I love giving her. But the minute something changes, I'm wondering what's going on, who that is. What's their doctor's name? How do they get home? What's going on? Because that's how my brain works. So when there's an interruption of a show or when somebody's crazy or my mind starts to dissociate from what I've gone paid to do. Yeah, the... Moncton show was so I'm I'm considering it should be a VIP sensory friendly snack optimized zone and it paid absolutely I'm not asking for I'm I'm premium tickets this this would be like baller right like yeah I 100% agree I'm not saying it should be discounted at all I'm just saying it, it should exist because people need it people have different needs and accommodations nowadays my myself included oh no 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 we're not people like old people over <laughs> over 40 watching this are gonna be like you lady shut up and no, you're not but it's i i let me let me just let me just show you how fast this can happen because i do think that we always have talked about you know quality block party and show buddies and we've talked about safe and, and inclusive spaces we've talked about safety security um consent all of those things at shows and at venues and the people who do it well do it really fucking good and the people who don't do it at all literally don't do it at all and you hear about it because their venues are shit they get talked about people are not safe when they go there and yet people still for some reason go to those venues to put their bands at those it's wild to me but you know all that to say like i think it's important you know to put credit where it's due and I think that from a safety perspective what ends up happening is it's as easy as this and I'll give you I'll give you an example I'm not going to say who if you've listened to other episodes you'll likely know but picture it you're at a band and you're having a great time you're you're in like the first let's say 10 rows of something and you're having a good time and you know there's no moshing or anything and 
And all of a sudden, some drunk woman bumps into me and dumps her drink all down my back, right? No problem. No problem. But what happens if it happens three and four and five times? And what if she starts to yell at me because I've been like, hey, hold on, because this has happened. And this is how people get punched out in an audience. I've seen it happen. This is, And this is just very, it can happen really quick. And I think that this sensory friendly area would give people who want to rock out and have snacks like me a way to mosh, but also do it in a way where we're not throwing elbows like we're 22 again. You know what I mean? Because I want to walk. I want to mosh. I want to crowd surf, but I want to, you know, do yeah. it in a safe way. It was so interesting to see the divide between generations. So a strange crew member, Haley, Haley Frail, a, a concert photographer extraordinaire. Yeah. She came yeah, to, shout out Haley. Yes, she absolutely. Came to the Queen show with us in Halifax. And she has been in the pit of all types of shows, but she's she's shorter than both of us, yeah. right? She's a she's a little thing. Um but Anyways, so while we're getting like, like fighting for our lives, I'm like looking over at her and I'm just like, she's like getting squashed and I'm like, I'm like, are you okay? I'm like, is everything all right? And she, she, and got over, she just looked up at me and she's like, Charisse, I mean, I I really appreciate this, but trust me, like I'm, I, I know what I'm doing. I'm okay. I've done this many times before. And I'm like, oh my God, protect her. But it's like, she's like, she's in the moment. She's loving and giving it. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, no. We're like being flung and, which was fun. It was, there's a part of a funness to it. But then there's a certain point where you're like, this is like when you're getting your spilled over you or people's arms in your face. Yeah, that's a little. I was worried about my teeth sometimes, and so yeah. this isn't this isn't a complaint thing. This is this is for anybody. Like if you have venues or if you're doing festivals or you're thinking about layout and logistics, you know, if you're looking to upsell some things, just give people a really accessible, safe place to just be away from others. Put the ticket price up a little bit, and they'll sell. Get them an offer they can't refuse, <laughs> right? And if they don't, the other ones still will. So you're not out anything, right? You're not counting on like- them, but. You know, that's that's just something that we've been learning. And I think we only choose to kind of be in those front areas when it's absolutely imperative that we're front row to be extracted, basically yeah. heli lifted to the side I'm stage. Surprised. That security guard was able to lift my ass out, but it happened. It happened. <laughs> like, I was just like, what's going on? I was just like, her too. Her, her yeah. too. Madison, I was like, her too. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just being shifted away. Like, like a noodle. But no, you guys, like, honestly, it's been, um, it's been a wild, like, month. And, you know, you've, you've noticed we're active on social. We're trying to get a lot of interviews booked. We have a lot of virtual interviews that are happening with some incredible people that we've been meeting in the industry, both recording producers, sound engineers, people who have worked on the biggest albums of all time, people who are working on the biggest albums right now in 2024. I mean, we're working with people who are working in movies, working with local bands, bands that are world renowned. I don't know. It's and again, it's all because of the love of music that we have here locally in New Brunswick, what we have here in Atlanta, Canada, what we have in North America as like, you know, Canadian music. It's strong. Um, But it's also people we've had people from all over the states, all over the world be contacting us about like what we're doing. And it's. I don't know it's really crazy we really just started the show over our love of the stampeders and R. it's R. ronnie it's very unfortunate that we lost ronnie a couple months back but we want to say you know all the best to the stampeders they're on the road right now doing their ontario tour and it looks like it's you know it's going really well but that's where it comes back you know where friendship and those those memories mean so much because obviously you know they're having a great time trying to you know do this tour but how hard must it be not having their buddy and Living over and, you know, he had so much personality, you guys. He was one of the coolest people we've ever gotten to meet. Um, you know, we got to interview them twice and I'll be honest, like, I don't know. The one in person was amazing, but what he did over Zoom was just so candid that it was just, he was larger than life and he always kind of brought that to the stage as well. And I think anybody in his family and friend circle would say that. And it was definitely a blow to find out that we lost him, but we're so gracious um, to their family for allowing us backstage last year on their, on their tour and being able to go back in the green room and like talk to them and have a small interview. Like that was, that was really meaningful. 
Um, because that is why we started the show. You know, Sharice and I, as you know, like we just started hanging out one night talking about our love of the Stampeders and our love of vinyl. And we just, I don't know, we hit record on our little Zoom mic one day and look where we're at now. We're still just hanging out on a little break, talking about vinyl and the shows we're all going to go to. And I don't know, we couldn't have pictured that we'd kind of be here now. Not to get sentimental, but I just had like a thought where, you know, we're going on to seven years of the show and it started with us kind of sitting down with a Zoom mic listening to the Stampeders. And I'm just thinking about like how much has changed, not just like with the show, but like with our lives personally, like we're yeah. working together now. Yeah. We've like all the things that's happened and this is sort of like it, the music and the, sh- the community that we created with the show is sort of remained constant, which I think is really beautiful. And I think we've been especially like, like I know we, we could speak for ourselves, but things have been so, so busy and like in oh, yeah. a great way over the last little bit. But it's, um, you know, just reminded me to take a moment to think about how special this is. Yeah. And we, like I said, we're, we're just, we're trying to be more present in the things that are happening. Like when we're in California and just taking a minute to go, whoa, okay. You're backstage. We were backstage. At the Whiskey A Go-Go. At the Whiskey A Go-Go. You know how many people got pregnant back there? You know how many SDIs were contracted back in that space? They could be being contracted right now. No, we don't know. What time is it? Hmm. There, nobody's doing Still sound yet, yet but soon, soon, soon they will be being contracted. So it's just like, so having those moments like in our heads, sometimes we're like, okay, this would be great for, you know, for strange groups. We got to share, we got to share, but like taking a moment and just being like, we got here. You know, we did not expect this shit to happen when we sat down six years no. ago. No, no. It's pretty, it's pretty magical, bestie. And you know, what you'll see a lot more of is just a lot more about very specific bands. So Sharice and I, we're going to be doing a little bit more of a series deep dive about like popular bands, bands that we've listened to, ACDC, Aerosmith, Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, Boston, April Wine, bands like that, that we know, like the back of our hands, we want to talk to you about it. If you want to call in and talk to us about these bands or any band, please let us know. Send us a comment, send us an email. We can call you into the show. We can bring you on the screen. You can come over to the studio, but we would love to hear your input. Um, We'd love to hear if you've gone to see these shows. We would love to hear just pretty much any stories that you have. We want to hear them. Um, You know, we're, we're really trying to get to as many shows this year and next as possible. And if there's, you know, a show that we need to go to that doesn't seem like it might be on our radar, please tell us. Um, if there's a guest or somebody that you feel we need to see their collection or we need to interview them, let us know. Um, we're just happy to, you know, hang out once in a while and get people on to actually sit down and talk about music. And I think lately since our California trip this time around and seeing Queens and hearing all the positive feedback about the show and people listening to it and meeting people and seeing people that we didn't realize listened, it motivated us to jump back in all hands on deck and really start making sure that we're producing at a proper like cadence that we're giving you guys great interviews that we're giving you fun content behind the scenes but if there's something more you're looking for let us know um one thing I do want to say just real quick about Patreon because I've had a lot of questions about this in the last few weeks and you probably heard a shout out about Patreon so if you're looking for an easy way to support our show we have something called Toonie Tunes Um, We have a lot of different tiers on Patreon, but if you just go to our website on the bottom somewhere, it'll say join now or just go to patreon.com slash strange grooves and you can pick any of the rewards there. And it's just a quick monthly, just like your Netflix um, subscription and it'll come to us. And it's as I think it's two dollars up to like fifty dollars. Yes. And you can do custom as well. And we have different rewards. We do mail outs. We do custom videos for you or your business or your band or a show that you might be doing. Um, we have lots of different things on there. So if you're looking for a way to support our show, that's how you do it. And there's going to be um, a really saucy picture. Yes, there is exclusively. There will be. If you want the ultimate dick pic, we got it for you. We'll just leave it at that. And that's the truth. And that's an exclusive. And if you really want to see that, then... <laughs> We're going to just going to be no context to this. I love it. <laughs> That's going to be the $10 tier. <laughs> $10 tier. And we're going to do also a video about that experience. <laughs> yes, we'll need to. Context will be provided, but we need to uh, entice you to support the show. So. And we also have to get back to California in September. So by you buying this <laughs> dick pic, 
it allows you to help us get back out to the West Coast. And I mean, how how nice is that? And this isn't like, this isn't clickbait. There is. There is. It is a, real. It is a penis. But it's it's one that you won't mind seeing. Yeah. No, it's historic, actually. This gets taken down from YouTube. <laughs> Demonetize Roger's TV. Oh, it already will be because there's cursing in it. But how old am I? Why do I say cursing? There's cursing <laughs> there's in it. There's some cuss words. <laughs> All right, like, it's been a long oh, day. Yes. This is what happens when you film in the middle of a corporate day. No, but I still got the band shirt on, so there you go. <laughs> Did it all for the nookie, <laughs> right? Like, yes. that's another concert we hopefully we're gonna yeah, we really, really, Limp really want to see Limp Bizkit. I'm so glad that band is having a moment of appreciation. I watched Fred Durst talk all about um, vegan alternatives yesterday for about 10 minutes. Who would have thought back in like he was signing records <laughs> and somebody asked him, they said, Fred, do you have any advice for somebody who might be trying to change like their lifestyle and do like a vegan diet? And he said, this was his advice. Fred Durst said, you should try to go to your comfort foods, try to find everything that you already enjoy, but get a vegan alternative of that. So if you like burgers, try to find an impossible burger. If you like mac and cheese, get a mac and cheese that's vegan and start with things that you feel you like. Don't just start out with like gross ass dishes that you're just like mm, I'm changing my life probably won't be adopted but I was like that's really good that's advice really solid. and that's why I would do it all for the nookie and I'd do it all for Limp Biscuit. so you heard it here first Fred if you're listening I really want to see you so I've put it out there, there. so <laughs> if anyone watching <laughs> if you manage Limp Biscuit and you're watching you knows that bubbles uh Josh video went far and wide I'm sure someone on the Limp yes. Bizkit team has seen it. So if you have. What a time. I honestly think that they should come out with a remastered vinyl where it's Bubble singing that song. I think it was great. Record Store Day 2025. Seriously, make it happen. Yeah, then have them in the studio. Do a... I think it's great. Great idea. You're full of them. I try. <laughs> I try my best. <laughs> Well, anything else, Bestie? No, I, I caught up. We are we are sense. ready to go, and we're ready to go see. Um, we've got another show coming up. We've got Kim Mitchell coming up. We've got we've got lots happening. So, you know, we just want to keep flowing and going and grooving. So, until next time, keep it strange. Keep it strange. If you've enjoyed this, then you have to hit strangegrooves.com for more amazing content. To support this podcast and music community, go to patreon.com slash strangegrooves. As always, keep it strange.